up to a uh, local hardware store, bought some timber and put it on some trestles and, and put some carpet down. We turned that little shed into, into the NutriCare home office or garage office for a period of time. So it's, it's never as rosy as, like what Brianne just mentioned as well, it's never as rosy as the, as the picture is on the front side. It's, uh, it's a lot of hard work that's gone into the journey, a lot of cold uh, winter days in that room, which was, uh, I'm glad we're out of there now. We're actually in, a, in the environment which, uh, which is a lot, more, a lot more comfortable for the team as well. So what we, what we did was from developing a product that could fix a problem in the market um, and has got a, a very minimal, or it's got zero footprint as far as I'm concerned, when someone buys it off the shelf from, from us. Um, so our job is to get the product made, shipped, and then get it onto the consumer shelf. Um, and then from the point of no control, uh, which is when someone buys it off the shelf, uh, we've got, uh, we're in, sitting in a very good position that um, we've produced a product that we don't care what happens after that because it, it will simply break down uh, with minimal impact on the environment or zero impact on the environment. So we developed um, Patch as a starting point and then we, I quickly realised that we could actually develop more products um, on, the, on the initial stage of the prototyping of that product and we created NutriCare, which is our parent company, uh, which is housing uh, all of the team and our IP and our research and development now as we grow. Uh, and we can produce further products into multiple categories that will actually echo or if not make our, make our solutions better every time we step forward with our, our plan and our vision. So what do we do? We create naturally innovative solutions with purpose that care for you and care for our world. I believe, I believe our world is the most common um, line that I do want to amplify on this is the fact that we live in it together. Um, so if I'm making a mess and you're living in it, it's not a nice environment. So what we want to do as a company and corporation is develop future products that actually do do that and share our backyard with each other. Um, and why is because every house needs more cleaner and, and natural in innovation. So we need to, why put a piece of toxic plastic or component onto an open wound on your skin when you're worried about what you're digesting in the food. So uh, we want to make products which has got, you know, we fix environmental challenges, we eradicate category waste. I never want to make a product the same as another product. We want to make product category better and amplify our model uh, across uh, categories. So we won't enter a category unless our product has got a purpose or a, or a complete innovation that's different from everything else that's there. I never want to mimic other products that I want to make and simply innovate, not imitate. Uh, our core three things that we stand for, and this is what we, 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 leave, we breathe by our company mission, is we create impact. Um, we've, we've created a massive change in a, in a category which has been stagnant for quite some time. We want to do that with duty of care and focus on our responsible sourcing all the way through to uh, the ethical standards behind our business. And we want to stay committed to those two. Um, our team is very passionate, very, very much involved in where we want to get to. Um, they believe in my vision and they believe in our mission of, of what we do. And we, we constantly sort of refine that uh, as we grow too, because I might be one person, but we've got an amazing team of people now around the world in three regional offices that, um, that really, really are committed to what we want to do as a group. Um, so we've had various different innovations from the first stage with Patch. Um, as we've expanded from Patch, we're going into other category, uh, into other wasteful categories such as uh, uh, sports tape and, um, and various different medical dressings as well, going into hospital supply as well with our, with our product suite. But why, why is Patch different from other products? Um, apart from the fact that we're, we've fixed a problem and apart from the fact that the product doesn't contain nasties in there, so it, uh, it, it's, it's got a solution which is compostable. Um, one of the big things that we've made a change with is my eldest son, Xavier, um, used to run away from me when I got out the topical uh, ointment or cream to, um, like antiseptic cream. So he used to run away from me, didn't, didn't want a bar of it. So we developed a product which is now, uh, we've got three different activated products. So we've got a pure bamboo product, which is our basic product which is bamboo fibre and bamboo gauze. We've got a coconut oil one, which has got little pandas all over it for kids, um, which coconut oil, um, 
the natural antimicrobial benefits behind coconut oil on any graze or wound type, it, it's, uh, it's an amazing core material, a core, core ingredient that we can actually use to, to aid or soothe. Um, same thing with aloe vera. Aloe vera is, once again, known for its, its, its natural healing characteristics behind burns and blisters. Uh, so we developed an aloe vera product and then we did a activated charcoal product made from bamboo charcoal. Uh, not similar to most of the other charcoals in the market, which are usually a coconut shell. We just wanted to keep it to the core of being the bamboo fibre. And um, we developed the activated charcoal to help draw or use it. Charcoal is an amazing component whereby in a, in a wound environment it's fantastic because it allows it draws toxins. So it's, a, it's a basically like putting a, a sponge on top of a puddle of water. It will just keep, keep on drawing toxins from the skin. So these are our major shifts compared to other products in the market. One being that you don't need to put ointment on the, on the actual dressing before you put it on the skin. Uh, we've had cases of the white tail spider bite in Australia being uh, completely sealed and the sting taken out of by active, activated charcoal product. It's, it's a consumer review that's been put online. The coconut oil, um, kids love um, the coconut oil. I don't know whether it's the panda or whether or not it actually does do what we ask it to do, which is obviously to help um, uh, soothe or, or aid to soothe a wound, wound uh, dressing uh, or wound environment. Um, the other point too is we are a class one medical device, so we don't make any claims in relation to the three core components, but um, the market is very, very, uh, uh, knowledgeable in the space of what they what these three components can do um, what we did was we we knew we were first to market uh, we knew we had a category disruptor so when we first started um, our focus was to obviously fix the problem in our in our home um, but then we thought about very very quickly about our global global growth and how do we get distribution up as fast as we possibly could so my focus went into the distribution model uh, and getting into health food and then going to the pharmacy, pharmacy model, grocery model, and then expanding out from there. We started in Australia uh, and we've had pretty rapid growth uh, since then. Um, our main focus around consumer goods will always be there. I don't believe that we need to be thinking too far outside of the square. And the solutions that we produce um, uh, will always amplify through our distribution model. So we made the call, um, uh, it was pretty much back in February of 2019 that we wanted to have a regional office in the US. Uh, we started with a third party in Europe and then we've been working with them uh, all the way through on distribution. Uh, and now what we're doing as far as making sure that we've actually got um, uh, everything covered from our side, especially the way that we work in the NutriCare way as we classify it. Uh, we work on um, on solutions that will that will aid and support our distribution model moving forward. Um, we uh, it was said to me quite some time ago by by, by a close friend of mine that um, there's nothing worse than actually going to buy a product. In this is this is in my mind, but and other brands have got other other solutions around it, but. There's no point in actually holding consumer to ransom to buy a product to give a charity a donation. Um, brands like us, um, uh, and there's plenty of them, and, and even Brianne as well, um, the whole thing about what we're doing behind the brand is really about profit with purpose. Um, that's one of the best parts about being a B Corp. Um, uh, and if we make the commitment that we actually are supporting on an ongoing basis in the background, um, it makes the company. Um, mission and, the, and the, the whole standard behind our purpose are so much stronger. So we don't actually um, have a set designated donation amount per um, per dollar we we we, uh, we make. Uh, however, we make social conscious decisions around um, where we educate uh, markets, like in in third world countries, whereby. There's no, there's no education on, on wound dressing. There's no education on, on compostability. So um, we've covered markets like East Timor, Haiti, uh, and also to uh, various areas in Zimbabwe about taking our products because we, we're very you know, transparent with the way that you can obviously de, um, uh, discard with our products that they don't make any impact on the environment where they go. So we're very, very fortunate that we've, uh, we've got 
good partners that we work with along the way, but we're not designated to one partner. So I don't believe in getting a consumer to buy my product so that I can give money to a charity because I can't, I can't be fully disclosed about how much money gets through to the charity. So our purpose is basically we make the call and we, we make the commitment around our, our education points and how we, how we get it to market. And this is pretty much how we do it. Uh, we work with education. So it's a lot of stock that goes out as far as the sampling, as far as education points into these regions and support. Because at the end of the day, everybody needs um, a plaster. We work with disruption, um, such as with what we did with, with Sea Shepherd um, and the fact of eradicating plastic waste off specifically um, Sea Shepherd's fleet um, was one of the big, big calls that we made. And then we do it all with love. Um, the whole purpose behind this business and, and where we get to is because we had a problem in the market and how we're fixing it. So we've gone out to market to, to share, that, uh, share that love and obviously help um, kids and different people around the world fix these things. So um, we've, we've covered markets like Haiti and East Timor and Zimbabwe. We are continuing to do more and more of that, uh, of that model. Uh, I believe it's a very, very strong position for the company to be. And the way we want to be moving forward is expanding our brand and educating markets about waste in environments. What perfect was, I was actually based out of Indonesia most recently before COVID hit. And um, obviously educating schools and kids about waste and plastics and all that sort of thing. Uh, was it, was it, what's happening over there as far as the movement is amazing. Um, but it's getting, the, the education is getting to the far reached areas to, to tell people don't throw a piece of plastic in the, in the environment. So we're very, very proud that we actually, we can actually educate some of the market around the world with these models. Oh, and I was at the this is a little quick video. This is the type of things that we're doing around the world. Um, <laughs> this is in, uh, in Ghent, in Belgium. Uh, it was done most recently. And uh, I'll quickly play it. Obviously, the subtitles are down the bottom for you to have a, have a read while it's playing. Hello, my name is Dr. Patch. And today we're going to stop to the people the Patch Plaster to let them see. What is the Patch Plaster? Well, that's what you're going to do. Come with me. Patch is on the road. Do you want to do it again? Waar kennis met de Pets Plaster? Ik ben Dr. Pets. Waar kennis met mijn dokter? Dag meneer. Hallo. Mijn naam is Dr. Pets. Gebruiken jullie pleisters? Ja. 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 En als je die gebruikt, wat is jullie ervaring daarmee? Het komt vrij makkelijk los. Nee, het komt makkelijk los. Soms wordt het altijd lang aanhoudt of er wel irritatie is of zo. Ja. ja. Eén op de vier mensen heeft uh, huidirritatie door de traditionele pleisters. En met zoveel? Ja, 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 daar verschiet u van. Ik verschoot ja. ook eigenlijk. Nou, dat is echt totaal niet. Ja, dat is is er een alternatief? Er is een alternatief. De alternatieven voor traditionele pleisters hebben wij vandaag meegebracht. Mensen die aan de traditionele pleisters altijd zo'n jeukend gevoel overhouden en dat de honden niet mooi geneest. Dan is de patchpleister de oplossing. Het is dus hypoallergeen. Het is composteerbaar, want het is 100% natuurlijke panden. Het is waterbestendig. En het ziet er super cool uit. Het is gewoon hip op zo'n pleister te hebben. Ja, het ziet er gewoon zo leuk uit. Ja, het is, ja, het is wel leuk. Ik zou u nu willen vragen: heb ik u kunnen overtuigen? Ja, ik wel, ja. Dat wel. Ja, voor je rekening, die wel bezig zijn met het milieu en dergelijke. Dan kijk, ik heb voor u hier een poosje mee. Ja, het draagt bij tot een beter milieu, een bezondere wereld. Uh, we moeten allemaal ons pas vooruit en met de pasplaats zijn we alles in de goede richting. Ja, oké, okay, goed. Ken je ook iemand die zo'n patchpleister kan gebruiken? Wel, deel dan gerust dit filmpje. So that's our little, uh, oh, mijn naam is Dr. Pet. Dat is een little uh, fun video from, from Ghent over in België. Um, uh, we've done videos in, and we've spoken to people on the street all around the world and the same, same uh, sentiment keeps on coming back that people are allergic, they have issues, um, they believe in a better, better world, a better environment, so we've got the solution now with Patch. Um, one thing that we do do, and you would have seen some hand flies going out there, everything that we do from NutriCare, um, from the consumer handouts and, and production of materials to what we're educating people with their products is all uncoated eco stock 
I don't believe that we need to be putting plastic coating on, on printed material um, where we don't have to. Um, certain things that we re reuse, we will do that. Um, but uh, as far as like a, a, a coated uh, uh, display stand whereby you have to do it uh, for, for uh, the longevity of it, but anything whereby we're educating consumers, we work with eco stock and, and keep it down to a minimum or recycle material uh, along the way. We've done social disruptions with uh, Sea Shepherd. Uh, we've, we've placed the entire fleet of Sea Shepherd with uh, patch glasses rather than having plastic glasses on their, on their fleet. And they love us, love us for it. Uh, and they keep on uh, echoing it around the world, which is fantastic. Um, one of the most, most uh, um, passionate part about this whole project is that what we've been able to achieve with um, little people like this uh, little AJ here over in America. His mother was using, uh, he had stage cancer and uh, he was wearing and using drip tubes and everything else. He started using patch because he didn't uh, have any reaction to our product and, and we battled all the way through. We followed him his whole journey all the way through. He's now uh, in remission and living life as a normal kid. Um, and these little stories that come about and the most recent one that we got, um, which was phenomenal. This is this kid who's um, been uh, 17 years old, and he's had you know 50 major surgeries, countless operations, and everything else. And he's now got the smile on his face. The fact he hasn't got any reaction to a product. Um, now that that's the sort of thing that makes our our world turn, and that what that's what makes NutriCare so strong in the space of consumer landscape and how we how we do things right. But our journey hasn't been a, an easy journey, um, uh, like you're probably going to hear from a lot of people. Um, uh, in the space of uh, in the space of since 2000, October 2017 was when our first product uh, uh, hit the retail shelves. Um, we made 30 million, 31 million products to date. Probably a couple, a couple more now. Uh, but uh, we're supplying 34 countries globally. And we're in over 24,000 retailers. Um, we've got three regional offices, um, and uh, and the hard part about this journey is obviously keeping core to our mission about um, uh, making sure we do and the things in the most sustainable and, and ethical manner all the way through, including running offices and and employing staff under a B Corp banner and doing everything along those lines. Um, sorry, if my uh, computer broke it. So our milestones um, back in 2015 was when Charlie had a reaction, um, and I tried different various products, and, and the research began. Uh, 2016, we we hit the first prototype, and we started testing, uh, and then we October we got the patch commercialised in that year. 2017, um, it took us for the uh, we got our first shipment in August. We got it on the retail shelf in October, and most importantly, the first production started in July. Uh, 2018, uh, we went uh, our first global shipment overseas. Um, and uh, in May, we got our first USA re retailer, which is um, Anthropology over in America. Um, we then went into a global expansion into Europe um, with our partner over there. Um, and then we started supplying East Timor and doing some other charitable work. Uh, we won three ABA awards with the Australian Business Awards. Um, and then in December of that year, we became a B Corp certified business. Um, uh, that's when the busy year happened in 2019. It started to, to amplify and, and grow from there. Uh, we opened our office basically in January. Uh, we started staffing in March, April um, of that year. Uh, we won the next year award over at Expo West. Um, uh, and then basically we went from the Expo West to the European Awards and we won the London or the European Award for Organic Lifestyle Products. Um, and then the rest is sort of history. It keeps on winning all the way through uh, from ECR and Buyer's Choice Awards to, we got notified on in September um, that we were in the top 10 B Corp worldwide for, uh, for, uh, for businesses around the world. And, and that happened within nine months. So for us, we knew we were on the right path and and, uh, and doing things in the right way. Um, one of the biggest things with this journey, and I, I dare say a lot of other companies, is the fact that you've got to travel to go and sell your product. Uh, and we made the commitment. I did a million miles in the air in 2019. Um, so we planted, we offset, apart from our production side of things, whereby we're, we're constantly growing bamboo. Um, 
uh, we're not growing it, obviously the party, the third party is, but um, all of our uh, miles that we're traveling in, in air, I bought 20, we basically bought 20,000 trees as far as to offset our carbon emissions just on, on corporate travel. Um, we've done more of that since then. Um, and most recently we did one on a road trip whereby we, we drove down from uh, uh, Canada down to Expo West. Unfortunately, Expo West was canceled uh, on a bit of a road trip to meet and, and see the stores uh, all the way down the coast of America um, that we've planted trees in reference to that as well. In 2020, um, we, in January, we established Nutricare Europe to support the brand in, in the region, support the distributor. Uh, and then we finalised our product extensions for new, new ranging and new products. And uh, then we took out the Next Year Consumer Choice Award most recently uh, on the virtual awards uh, away from Expo West. Uh, and then we've also, too, we've, we've expanded our new product categories that we're going to be going into moving forward this year. Um, our climate commitment, we work with various different partners. Um, first and foremost is obviously where we're planting our trees, which is trees.org. Um, it's the most clear, uh, it's the clearest uh, line of donation that we can find in the, in the tree uh, planting space. We work with the Climate Collaborative over in the US uh, as a member and also to the American Sustainable Business Council. And we're a proud member of ECO as well with ECO World uh, Online, thanks to Obviously, the first referral through to, uh, to Jennifer was um, through an ex-colleague of hers as well. Um, the certified B Corp stamp we're very proud of, um, and we, we, we work very, very closely around the way that we um, run our business. Um, and, and you'll see by my pillars in the later part of this uh, that you'll understand where we come from. Um, so at the core, um, unfortunately, there's no category for us to sit in the animal free category. We don't test on animals. We don't contain any, in all, any animal derivatives uh, in our products. However, there's no category for us to actually get a bunny tick, um, unfortunately, in a medical device. Uh, but we're very, very proud in that space and we stick to our word on that. Um, we're Australian owned and operated company. Um, we don't contain plastic, silicon, latex or parabens. Um, we sustainably source product as far as with the um, the bamboo source and manufacturing at near the source as well uh, so we minimize our impact and the fact now that we're fully compostable product uh, which we're doing a soil toxicity test at the moment however we've got visual documentation to prove the case of where we've come from with the, the composting um, our responsible sourcing is key as well where we come from what we do um, it's, it's like Graham was mentioning as well, it's, it's your core message. If you don't have that sorted out, um, you, you basically, not, you're, not, you're not in line to where you need to be in the business or, or to educate the consumers in the right way. So it's very much key for us, uh, which falls in line to our production uh, and, our, and the way we mill, uh, the way we work with the fabrics. Um, right through to our packaging footprint. Um, we made a commitment where our strips were fully compostable because they'll be with fibre and and, uh, and natural components all the way through. Uh, but our inside packaging wasn't when we first started. We had a biodegradable film on one side, so we made the commitment to shift that to a fully compostable uh, paper seal. Uh, uh, and that was in 2019. Sorry, my computer's dropped. Okay, the packaging uh, is fully compostable using recycled cardboard and uh, low grade adhesion onto the, to hold them together, including it basically still hand rolling the tubes um, and making them, uh, making them have what they, what they are on the shelf. Um, and the big one that we, we shifted across in, in, with our cartons, we took away all of our plastic tape off our shipments uh, and we shifted to a paper tape. Um, that removes close to about 20,000 uh, linear meters of plastic tape per 40 foot container. So it's, it's just one of those extra little small steps that you can think about on your pipeline of supply, uh, how you can actually minimize what you do. Uh, we've now engaged, we've now built up our research and development and we bring future products forward uh, and investing heavily into this in the future. Uh, we've expanded our global offices into three key regions. One is APEC for Asia Pacific. The next one is EMEA for Europe, Middle East and uh, Africa. And then through to the Americas. And we're going to continue to operate those three, three regional areas. Production at the moment is in northern China, which is obviously where the bamboo fibre is milled. Um, so we are looking at different substrates. And obviously with the, the global 
um, situation currently and moving forward in the future, we're looking into better ways that we can actually do this. Uh, which comes down to our transport and distribution. Uh, how do we minimise that? Who do we work with? And how do we, how do we grow the, the brand and minimise as much as this as possible? It is still the most economical way of transporting uh, by a sea. However, uh, the less of this we can do, the better moving forward. So it's on our, on our core radar to, to make better. Uh, we are a class one medical device, so we are under regulatory compliance uh, with the US, with the FDA, TGA in Australia, MedSafe for New Zealand, um, TV, CE, ISO. So taking a, a natural product into this territory was a challenge. Um, it, was a, it was basically trying to reshape the way that a lot of these, a lot of these uh, regulatories uh, think. Um, there's a lot of push and shove around getting the product in front of them in the right format, um, understanding what they wanted and understanding what we wanted and trying to, to meet in the, media, in, in the middle, uh, which we were able to achieve and do. Um, we've won a stack of these things. Uh, we're really proud of them. Um, and, uh, uh, and it's because of the team that we've got behind the company. We're now employing in excess of 22 people now globally uh, in our offices directly under NutriCare. Uh, and there's probably a further another 10 to 15 people on top of that now operating with us. Uh, and making things better on a daily basis. So it's not just me anymore. It's, it might, we might have a vision, but these guys are pulling it all together and, and driving it forward. Um, which gets to me to really where we sit as far as a brand and a culture behind um, the business behind NutriCare. I believe culture is key um, and it's culture and creativity and giving people behind the business um, that you bring into the business a voice, allowing people to communicate that. Um, that will create innovation. It will actually collectively grow the business and, and challenge new shape shift categories of what we're doing for the future. We create disruption from those innovations and those, those, uh, that creativity that comes into play, which furthermore drives profit. And then from NutriCare's perspective, we drive purpose back into what we do. So this is where we sort of, we sit as a whole and where we want to be moving forward. So the more products that we can get to market, the more ethical we can be, the more sustainable we can be, um, we'll harness all of this and, and drive the brand forward. And just finishing off, uh, this is my, my little thought that I, my little meme that I listen to, on, on a, I look at it pretty much on a daily basis, the fact that we look into, deep, if we look deep into nature, then we'll find an understanding for everything better. Um, which is an old Albert Einstein but um, that's, uh, that's my little presentation. So I'll go back into uh, some Q&As. Uh, and I've just got to, Jen, I've just got to check which ones, uh, which ones are live and which ones aren't. They're uh, all yours now. So they're all mine now? Yep, okay, so. I've got a few. <laughs> Talk okay. about We've got a few, hey, hey guys. Um, all right, do you know how big the market problem was when you decided to solve the problem for your son? Um, Yes, I, that was the part that I was going through. So I went through different various university studies. Um, it wasn't one type of issue. It wasn't a reaction or it wasn't a, a contact dermatitis. It was a whole combination of different uh, meanings and different cases that we looked at. And at that stage, it was about 20%. Um, from doing our research, being on the ground and speaking to people directly, um, literally walking onto the street with a camera crew and asking questions to people was first and foremost after, after I did my own friends and family and started to expand out from there. We do that pretty much everywhere we go. Um, it doesn't matter if we're doing a sampling in a store, probably not in today's climate, but um, if we're doing something like that, we're asking people all the time. So we're constantly getting our own data, our own intel. We've run surveys, we've run um, uh, global reach, um, uh, analysis. We've also done sit-down analysis with um, peer groups in different regions like Belgium. We just did one most recently in Ghent. Um, and that was actually a closed door one before we did to the street as well. So it's, it's quite a big problem. It's one in four. Um, Northern Europe, uh, some areas of Northern Europe are one, a lot higher than that. It's somewhere, somewhere around about 30% of the market. So um, because mainly their skin types are, uh, are different because they live in pretty much in a, in a closed uh, indoor environment most of the year uh, with air conditioning and fluorescent tubes and uh, their skin uh, conditions are a lot higher. Um, but 
it's, it's, it varies around the world. Some areas and some hotter markets, there's not a big issue. Some hotter markets, there are an issue. So it's, it's a combination. Um, that's the size of that. Uh, next question was, are you targeting personal households only? Or are you targeting commercial healthcare sector as well? Does your business model need to change much to address the latter? Uh, are there other challenges in the coming, like coming up uh, against big farm incumbent providers, price, meeting volumes, etc. Um, good question. Uh, the fact is that yes, we are wanting to expand into commercial or contract. Um, it's it's a sector that we can supply currently. Um, it's one of those things about your relationships and who's in the in the mix. Um, a lot of the healthcare. Um, sector around the world is run by it's pretty much a tender process um, so yes it is very very um, uh, heavy, heavy hitting on price uh, and meeting volumes etc however we believe we've got a pretty unique um, solution that actually adds value to what they've currently got uh, the most common question when you go to give blood or if you go into a triage uh, situation with any hospital is are you allergic to medical dressings <laughs> it's probably the first question a nurse asks you and it's probably the third question on any Red, Red Cross blood donor sheet. So if you can tell me that there's not a problem in the category or well, we can actually help an additional uh, with additional products that shouldn't be price sensitive, um, there's a pretty good argument there for us. Um, however, it's about scaling a team and it's dedicating someone to actually run that division of, of the growth of the brand. So uh, really, really... Uh, really proud of it. Uh, the next one was awesome story, James. In your company product development, you seem to have covered every base. Does your price point make your product accessible for everyday use? Um, yeah, uh, it's a challenge all, all the time uh, because we're making with uh, these type of source materials. Um, it is expensive. Um, we sit on the retail shelf price point though for pretty well priced. Uh, we're sitting at $6.99. Uh, we keep that in regional price point or regional currency. So in Australia, it's six ninety nine. Um, in uh, in US, six ninety nine US dollars. Um, however, um, if you break it down into what you get in a tube from us, we're actually cheaper, if not on price point with a lot of the other products. So we put twenty five strips in a tube, um, and they sell for six ninety nine, six dollars ninety nine. The real reality is, is that do people buy on discount in this category? The answer is yes, but most of the time it's not. It's um, people don't want to find the, unless you're buying for a sporting club or a big volume buy, then people are, people are quite happy to pay a little bit more for, for the right solution. Um, however, we've also to report out a new product, which is going to be launching in about a month's time, which is on the go pack. So they're a little four packet flat pack and I haven't got one in front of me. Um, but the four packet um, it comes, it will have a retail price point of about $2.50. Uh, and it's a little wallet pack that you can buy in a convenience model that uh, will help people uh, across the counter. Um, so hopefully that answers that question. Uh, what product material are you used to create the black colour of your patch? So all of our products, all of our components are all naturally dyed. Um, and the, the bamboo fibre is what the, the core product is made from. Um, so that's how we, how we achieve that um, uh, with the material there. Um, what, is the core, what are the key benefits of being, of being part of a B Corp? Um, the key benefits is really um, how we look after our world, how we look after our staff, how we look after our, um, our mission, where we, what it does is it allows you to reset and actually analyse your business from a very high level. Um, it's one of the things that keeps you focused around what you're doing day to day. And actually, if you haven't thought about certain things, what I love about B Corp is the fact you look at the assessment and you can go back into the assessment and analyse what you're doing right down to um, power consumption in the office through to paper wastage um, or uh, material wastage um, with day-to-day -day tasks and things like that. So you can go right into a granular level, but the main purpose behind, the benefit behind B, being a B Corp is the fact we profit with purpose. Um, what we do is, is it, you know, we, we have to live by that drum and, uh, and what we do. Um, so what is the next question? You mentioned having uh, had big business failures prior to launching Patch. What did you learn from those? How do you overcome them, uh, overcome a lack of confidence of fear of failing again? Um, the fails is what's made me stronger. Um, I know that sounds a bit cliche, but 
uh, without having failures, you don't learn mistakes. Uh, and we, without learning the mistakes, you don't know what to do next. So you can go into a stadium completely blindfolded and talk normally, take the blindfold off and you'd freak out. Um, so it's no different from business. If you don't know the steps, if you haven't walked in there, prepped yourself up towards that, uh, the issues, um, and I'm still making mistakes. Everybody does. Um, it's, you wouldn't be doing, you, you're not running a business unless you're putting out fires, right? So you make mistakes on a daily basis. However, you try and mitigate those as much as possible to become smoother and smoother what you do. So yeah, it's, um, it's always a challenge. Um, uh, but you know, first and foremost is where we're, where we're going now and, and really proud of it. Um, has your expansion and growth uh, and or ability met demand for your products have been held back by ethical eco commitments? Um, have you ever had felt it was being justified to make compromises to meet demand and get broader benefit out there? hundred percent. It's what you've got to stick. You've got to go back to your core and, and dig deep on what you dare to do. If, if we were going to make compromises to get products out there to cheaper, uh, I'll, I'll close the business. Um, I don't want to have a situation whereby we're so strong in one field that we've got to try and adjust that to, um, to get there. What we've got to do more is we've got to educate more and we're going to be out there and, and talking to people more often uh, and, and tell them the benefits about what's right and what's wrong in the market and let them make their choice. Um, so that's where we sort of sit with that. Yes, it's very, very easy to get caught up in, oh, if I do this this way, I'll make it cheaper, but is it going to compromise what our eco commitment is and it's, it'll be massive so it'll completely reverse all of the all of the hard work we've done to date um and it's yeah it's one of those things we won't do um as, as long as i'm in charge um with r d how easy is it uh or easy or hard do you find partnering with universities to achieve research um difficult uh however um we're we're a position whereby we're a we're a we're a little product, we're a little brand that's on the marketplace, um, but we've got, to, we've got to protect our IP as much as we can because big pharma and everything else, they can come along and squash us tomorrow with a, with a, with a compromising product. Um, so we do protect a certain aspect of our IP. Um, so we don't want to share out too much externally from the company, but we have done closed group um, studies and we've actually done a lot of, lot of back-end um, research and we've got documented case studies all the way through of what we do. So we try and share as much as we can, but we've got to think about the fact that we are small and we don't want to get squashed by the Goliaths just yet. Um, so we want to make, continue making products that make, make a change on the, on the landscape. Um, uh, with R&D, how easy is it or hard is it to find partnering? Uh, sorry, that was that one. Sorry, I'm doubling up. And last one, last question I believe was, do you have any direct competitors yet? And how, I, how do you protect your company? I think I just sort of almost semi-answered that. Um, we don't have any direct competitors yet. Uh, we are the only vegan-friendly, uh, animal-free product that sort of sits on the landscape of wound dressings. Uh, the fact is that we want to continue that. And uh, I don't believe the other bigger boys can actually, or big boys and girls, uh, can play in that space. Um, so I think we're pretty... We, we, there's always going to be a copycat or a replica come out. Um, we're ready for that. Um, but I think the strength is behind the brand now. I think the people that, that support us and look what behind what we do day in, day out are, are growing. Um, what I'd like to see is more retailers, you know, support us as much as that. So uh, the buyers in the retail landscape, the buyers that are at the, the chains and the stores don't just look value on how much money they're going to make. They're actually value on proposition to the consumer as well. So that's where it's at. James, um, could I just follow through uh, a question that others might be interested in? It, it seemed odd that you haven't had the big end of town challenge you with a copycat product. Um, I'm sort of, yeah, it's sort of one of those things. I don't know whether they're sitting on the sideline waiting. Um, but um, I think we've definitely got uh, we've got definitely got a lot of attention on us. Um, it's a matter of how we, you know, if they do, um, if another brand came out with a natural based product and they weren't a natural based company, I don't know whether the markers would actually take to it as much as what we've got kind of or the active activity around. Uh, we are the largest followed 
women care dressing in the world when, it, when you look at Instagram and Facebook and, and, and Twitter and the like. So we've got, a, we've got an audience. Um, we've got a captive audience that are simply getting results from what we put on their skin. Um, like the children, like AJ, and there's, there's hundreds of them. And, you know, we, we receive compliments pretty much from youngest to the oldest on pretty much a weekly basis. And that's what those little, those little comments, those little emails that we get are the one, what's, what's driving us even harder. So I don't think, uh, I, I'd never say never, <laughs> but I don't think that we'd, uh, it'll be a matter of time that will be, that someone will come along, but uh, whether they come along and uh, to start knocking on our door versus coming out with a new complete product line, I don't know whether they invest in that space at the moment. Right, which kind of um, begs the question of, I don't really understand, and I'm, I'm sure others have the same question, why are, um, why are these, if 25%, I think, is the number you quoted, you quote that of people are allergic to wound care products. Yep. What's the liability? I don't understand why there's no liability. Um, it's a low risk. It's a low risk product. Um, most commonly, what will happen is someone will get a, be itchy on the skin. They'll take it off and they won't bite again. Or they'll do what I did, and I didn't even I didn't even complain to the company that happened to my son. I just tried other products until I found there was nothing there that worked. So I can tell you, this, it's the same situation because it, the rash will go away because the irritation, the scratchiness goes away. People forget about it. So there's sort of and there's no big class claims you can do upon it. It's not making a, it doesn't make a, a permanent uh, mark unless that where it tore the skin off would make a permanent scar. Um, that's a potential, but at the end of the day, it's the number third, it's the third question on any Red Cross donor sheet in the world. Um, and if you walk into any hospital or speak to any ambulance operator, the first, pretty much the first bank of questions will be, are you allergic to medical dressing? So. I, we know that there's a uh, there's situations there that um, uh, that pop up and there's a you know they arise, but they're obviously mitigating any risk at that point in a in a professional environment. Uh, but I don't believe on the consumer level how uh, the hotline wouldn't be running a little bit more often. Like you know, it's just. But I'm not on their phone line, so I don't know. <laughs> it just seems quite odd, actually. Um, so that answered my, I had a question around risk, but I think you've, um, you've, you've answered that if, if, um, cause it's kind of, you're at the other end of the, the spectrum. I, I wonder if you've got a risk of ever being challenged, if there was a reaction, I don't know how there could be given your ingredients. Yeah. But, um, we, we've, got, we've got, we have to, um, under the TGA, under the FDA and under all regulatory, um, structures and as, as we're registered device as a whole risk process that we have to do uh, if anything did arise but um, with 31 million products no 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 complaints we're pretty happy yeah it's really impressive I guess um, I mean I'm asking the question too in relation to a lot of the um, uh, eco sustainable products I mean I think obviously is a brand who, who has grown quite big but there are a lot of um, similar products in this space that literally are still being made on kitchen stoves. Have you got any comments about anyone's risk exposure with those? Um, as far as I started on a kitchen bench, so, um, you know, I, I, can, I can resonate with uh, a lot of companies out there. What I, what I would say though, with any, anyone who's making products at home in that environment to sell to a third party, uh, I'm a big believer that please do it in a, just, for the sake of um, you know, a couple of hundred bucks here and there, you can go and get a clean room or you can rent a part of a clean room to do it properly and proficiently so that you do eradicate. Because the last thing that you do want to have is any foreign objects or contaminations happen to a consumer-based product. Um, anyone who's going to take a product to a commercial level, I believe you have to make that commitment. Oh, we've got James. James. Okay. <laughs> I'll just switch back to the other James for a minute. Half, your, half our panellists today, everyone, are called James. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like the entry. What is your name? James. Okay, you're in. <laughs> Enjoying James's birds. <laughs> I can't this isolation. 
two more quick ones before we um, turn over to James too. Um, I, I don't believe, I might have missed it, but um, someone had a question, I think it was Jane Milburn, um, is she about how you make the black? Is that charcoal? Yeah. Yes, the, the, uh, what we do with the, the, or the charcoal is made from bamboo. Um, so it's, it's basically charred bamboo. It's like what um, normally activated charcoal is made from coconut shell and they char the coconut shell down into a powder. Oh. We use bamboo fibre and we char it down into a powder and then it's placed into a gauze material. So the gauze material is bamboo substrate. Oh. Um, however, it's charcoal bamboo fibre in the gauze and that's what sits in the, in the, um, for the bamboo fibre. So it's actually got a, it's, it's actually, I'm not allowed to say it's got a medicinal benefit, but bamboo or charcoal itself has been used, used for centuries in uh, eradicating toxins out of um, uh, stomachs um, for sickness to um, toxins on wound dressing. Surgeons use it in surgery, but there's no commercial or, or retail level product on the market that has a charcoal that's, uh, that's available apart from a gauze pad. So that's why we, that was my hero product that I first started with. That's all, Patch was going to be just that. <laughs> oh, um, and then we looked into, okay, we're, we're, we're trying to minimise shelf space so that you've got more selection for the customer on the shelf. Um, you're not going to have enough presence to be strong on the shelf. So we started thinking, okay, well, can we expand? And then we thought about breaking the types of wounds up. So you've got a natural one for cuts and scratches, uh, uh, aloe vera for burns and blisters, a coconut oil for children, we put the panda on it, and that's become our, our hero mascot around the world. And then the activated charcoal is for the out and about person who's getting bites and splinters. So, um, but now we'll expand, we're expanding out from there as well now. Yeah, great. Um, so James, our next James is has a crossover with you in that, um, well, uh, actually just stepping back with you for a minute, I want one more question, brands. I know, um, so, I love Sea Shepherd. I know that it's, um, you know, Sea Pirate who's gentrified himself. All kinds of um, accusations, of course, get thrown at Paul Watson, depending on who's um, hurling them. Um, a <laughs> <laughs> um, and he's, he's such a, um, a, um, a quiet kind of guy, actually, when you meet him, isn't he? But um, so what's, how do you choose the brands that you um, support? You know, in um, ways, you know, the disruption kind of brands. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, it's, it's hard because it's coming, it comes in thick and fast. Like Graham mentioned as well, we get daily requests to join a charity or do things. That's why we don't make a solid commitment. We basically, we try and do our own analysis on who or what or how. The work we did in East Timor, was directly to the people on the ground in Timor, and it was done through the uh, vet, uh, young veterans, who's a very close friend of mine, Matthew Keane, who had a team of 10 people going across to East Timor and physically giving product to, people, to the people of East Timor. So I knew the product was gonna get there. I worked with Phil, Phil Lay from uh, Retail Global, and he does, does a lot of direct charitable support in Haiti and he's physically raised money, but they've built a school themselves. They've built a farm themselves. So what we wanted to do with, with Retail Global was we supported the school and we supported the little hospital they built, and then we gave out products to all the households. So we knew the product was gonna to get to there to where it needed to be. Um, uh, with the tree side of things, I did a fair amount of digging around who's the right tree planting group that we could be a part of. Um, and trees.org were very, very solid when it came down to their commitment, how much cost was involved to plant a tree, how many trees they planted, how long they've been running for. So it was a various different things around why we chose them. Um, uh, and we worked out the calculation of how much airfare and carbon offset we needed to do. Rather than paying a, an airline, which might've gone into an admin pool and then it might've gone into another charitable and then there's another admin pool. So it might've been meant we've got you know, one cent out of a dollar that we've donated getting through the tree. So we want to make sure that our commitment gets to there. Um, but um, it's very, very hard. And charities are very, very, you know, they need the money. Um, but I don't want to hold a consumer, I don't want to hold you ransom that if you buy my product, I'm going to give 10% to XYZ charity because you might want to give money to a charity. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't want to buy my product. You might buy my product just for the sake of supporting that. Uh, and the charity 
might be just that desperate that they need money, but they don't believe in what my, eth my ethical standards are. So you're putting them at ransom as well. So I believe you're just going to be actively supporting your core mission uh, rather than trying to... There's charities coming in every day, right? So, yeah, I understand. Look, I think that there's also... Um, you know, as a business, you have a right to make a decision about who you want to be aligned with. I mean, that's that's the whole point, isn't it? You made a decision about what you're involved with. There seems to be um, an increasing movement, though, about direct involvement too, and knowing exactly, you know, where you're doing. I see. It's like it's like having someone who needs my product who's actually got my product, or um, need. You know, we're we're planting trees in a region that needs trees because there's no plantation. That, that's that's for me is what it's all about. Yeah, sure. Actually, um, that might be a good um, point to ask to uh, introduce James to James Grudgeon from the Good Beer. Well, a Good Beer always helps. The Good Beer Company, Newstead Brewery. Um, James is a the man. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> James um, is a good Aussie because he makes beers for causes, and that should resonate with a few. James, um, just before um, James Dutton uh, wraps, have you got anything you'd like to? Um, Ask him. Oh, look, I, I think. I think. Oh, just lost your audio, James. Audio. Hello. I think what you're doing is okay. Back. You're back. I've got you on. All right, hang on. I'm just trying. Is that working now? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, Oh, look, just, just, just what you're doing is amazing, obviously. And um, I, I hear what you're saying about direct involvement. I've been working with a number of different charities that we support through a percentage of sales. Yep. Um, and what that does mean is that we don't always have um, complete control over how money is spent, uh, what happens um, with the donations. Um, and, and I think what you're saying has a lot of credit. So that this is certainly something that we've been thinking about um, as the Good Beer Co. And I think the, the, the primary benefit that we deliver is actually we start conversations with people in the mainstream because we've got a beer for a cause that um, gives, gives that cause a bigger platform. Uh, but if we were to do it, us, if we were to, to look at doing things differently instead of supporting a specific existing charity, what do you think we should, we should do uh, when we're considering that? Um, one of the things would be um, maybe put together a, an internal committee and what you do on a, on a monthly or quarterly basis is you go and apply what you're doing. Um, uh, that's a, that's a, that, for me, would be an easy way to do it. If, you, if you're thinking about trying to build that community up around, the, around the, the cause, well, go and buy playground equipment for a bunch of kids or go and, go and yep. apply and, and you know, support a, a community involvement around the beer and, and do something whereby you shout the crew because they've cleaned the beach up or things like that that can actually, it might be the core cause, but things that will actually amplify the cause, providing your cause, your true buy and your honourable and your audited. Yep. Um, you're not a charity, like we're not a charity, but <laughs> where we want to be involved in what we want to do, we try and bring everybody together with it. And that amplifies your story too. So. Great. Yeah. Cool. Well, that may be a good point to transition to you, uh, James, because James is a is a serial cause man. Actually. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> His life's work has been creating products to suit causes rather than having a product that um, then um, you know that, that you apply a cause to. James Dutton, thank you so much. That was just really interesting. And, um, <laughs> yes, we'll see, you. <laughs> see you on the other side. And um, happy to stay around. And James Grudgeon, um, welcome.